should have the right to genetically enhance their children using nanotechnology. Genetics has been the main influence in health and disease, so it's no surprise that many people agree with the idea of genetically engineered babies. However, it does raise some questions such as, is it ethical, is it safe, and what are the consequences? Today, our group will introduce a few key points as to why human genetic engineering is not the best idea for our future generations. Before we go into our arguments, we must first make an observation. Earlier this year, the Nuffield Council on Bioethics released a statement saying that genetically engineering children could, more, could be morally permissible. This is the reason we are having this debate. However, the council released this statement under two conditions. First, it could only be permissible if it bought benefits to the children, and second, it could not contribute to a socioeconomic discrimination. These two conditions are key factors in today's round, and if they are not met, you should negate. 
Main point one is health concerns. To begin, we can't predict the impact these genetically modified humans could have on an individual. According to Cousins and Darnowski, this, this technique, like other forms of ge human germline modification, is in fact both medically unnecessary and profoundly risky to the children it could produce. In addition, researchers explain that the complete makeup of genes make editing unborn children illogical. Right now, we know nothing about genetic enhancement, said Hank Greeley, director of the Center for Law and the Biosciences at Stanford. Even with an apparently straightforward physical characteristic like height, genetic manipulation could be a tall order. Some scientists estimate height is influenced by as many as 93,000 genetic variations. This explains that trying to genetically modify children is not as simple as people make it seem. You would not have to remove one genome, but you would have to tamper with hundreds or thousands of them. This is not, the risk is not worth the reward. Even though modifying genes has its speculated benefits, according to the American International Medical University, it is still not 100% reliable. An accident could result in the creation of a stronger type of disease, therefore causing an epidemic when released. Main point two is autonomy. <clears throat> it should be established before anything that everyone has a form of autonomy over themselves. Philosopher Immanuel Kant defines moral individual autonomy as one's ability to decide for oneself and without the injection of others. Growing up, children are always asked what they want to do with their life, and they have the freedom to be whatever they can imagine. Some say they want to be doctors, others say they want to be lawyers. The list is endless. One thing, though, is that regardless, or regardless of if they go through with their original decision, they have the right to decide for themselves. This cannot be done in the affirmative work. By saying parents have the right to genetically engineer their children, they take away the child's right to decide for their future. As explained by Dr. Mateo Mamili, Reproductive cloning violates the child's right to an open future, especially in cases where the child is brought to life with the explicit intention of creating someone, someone who resembles a pre-existing person. But Cannon argues that reproductive genetic engineering can infringe a child's right to an open future and that this fact should seriously be taken into account. When we create perfect babies, it is for a specific task like giving someone brains to be a doctor or bronze to be an athlete, and it takes the child's freedom of choice growing up. Because they are expected to be what they were created for, this defies individual autonomy and is not justifiable. My point through is discrimination. Parents genetically enhancing the children can lead to forms of discrimination. One form is gender discrimination. Gender, gender selection drastically discriminates against women. In countries like China and India, they hold more value in males than females. By allowing gene editing to occur, you give countries like these the ability to discriminate against genders based on their productivity. China is currently dealing with the issue of male overpopulation and affirming will do nothing but make matters worse. Another form of discrimination is socioeconomic discrimination. As explained by Marcy Tarnowski, Executive Director of the Center for Genetics and Society, allowing any form of human germline modification opens clinics to start offering genetic upgrades to those who are able to afford them. We could all too easily find ourselves in a world where some people's children are considered biologically superior to the rest of us. The cost of genetically enhancing children would dramatically favor families with higher incomes. And this can lead to a divide as children grow up between the normal and genetically enhanced and create a bigger divide in the already controversial split between low income and wealthy families. Overall, granting parents the right to use the kind of technology could result in risky health concerns, unethical practices, and even more divisions in our society. This is where my teammates and I proudly make it resolved parents should have the right to genetically enhance their children using nanotechnology. Should. 
if you give the parent the right to genetically modify their children, they are also, um, they have access to naming that child a boy or a girl. Why would you want that? What if they choose more boy, uh, higher boy population over a girl population? Okay, but what, what would you say about the health benefits? That's, if we do proceed with the nanotechnology. Or what did you say? With the health benefit? About what? About nanotechnology, what would you say? It's not 100% reliable, so why would you trust that? But that's why it is undergoing uh, through okay. labs right now. Question, what does your main point to talk about? I'm sorry? What does your point to talk about? The your point second point. The second point I mentioned um, was the health benefits and um,
sorry about that. Uh, everyone ready? Let's begin. All right, so we're first gonna start with the affirmative case and then we're gonna go back to the negative case. So looking at the affirmative case, my opponents talk about how, first of all, let's go to their definition. We'll go straight down. On their definition, we agree. However, this is going to be why we win. They talk about how there are like three key reasons to, uh, three key reasons about uh, gene editing. First, making a design of baby. Two, making a baby intelligent. And three, uh, increasing the lifespan. When looking at the uh, first two scenarios, these two are problematic. My, my uh, partner talked about how there's a difference between, uh, like in our case, there's a difference between helping your child and like making your child quote unquote better. This is where things get wrong. When you look at the two observations that we brought up earlier about it being in the best interest of the child and not decreasing and not increasing discrimination, this is what you have to focus on because they didn't address it, which means they agree to it. We need to look at this to show that since they don't, since and to make a designer baby, you're getting rid of undesirable traits, and this causes like the fact of otherization, meaning that we don't want this because we don't think it's right. That's going to cause discrimination because you don't believe that that's what your child should want, and that's not something that we should look for, look towards. Uh, going down, they talk about how uh, they talk about how we should prioritize. They they address how uh, we should prioritize the risk of decreasing disease. Yes, this might be a good thing. However, this is not reliable. Refer back to those two observations. It has to be. It has to be be in the best interest of the child and decrease discrimination. However, Wendy, uh, my partner Wendy addressed how there are 93,000 genomes in the, in, like the, in the idea of height. You have to manipulate more than 1,000 genomes to try to manipulate something like height, let alone diseases like Alzheimer's or like cancer. This is going to be extremely difficult in the affirmative world to achieve, which means that it's not likely. They also said that it's experimental. Since it's experimental, that shows how it's still risky and you don't want to risk children living in, this, uh, you don't want to risk like manipulating genes like that. Going on, they talk about how, uh, they talk about how you benefit the child's life as well. However, you're going to decrease the child's quality of life due to the fact that since it's experimental, like they said, these children are going to be test tube children, and they're going to have to be evaluated over and over again to make sure that this is, uh, this is uh, safe. They brought up the Chinese uh, doctor, a uh, Chinese doctor in Malibu named James of the Two Twins. However, when looking at this situation, an article was posted two hours ago showing how, one, the doctor didn't release uh, like reports showing how he did this, and two, the little bit of evidence that he did release shows how this is going to pose negative health consequences on the children later on in their life. This is not good for them. This is going to be bad later on, decreasing their quality of life. Uh, going on, you have to also address how this, this is going to be limited access for children. Everyone can, uh, can't get this, so it's not going to benefit everyone. That's going, just going to increase discrimination, and I'll touch that a little bit more later. Uh, going on, they talk about how, uh, so like they talk about, so yeah, they talk about how it's in the experimental stage, but just cross apply what I referenced earlier about how it's going to decrease the quality of life. They talk about, uh, on their second point, they look at the early life of ch children, and they talk about uh, China, specifically how China is using this, in it, using this uh, situation. However, this is just going to increase the problem of discrimination, because right now, like, Recently, China had the one-child law, and this this uh, wanted Chinese families wanted more boys than they did girls because they had this law. Now there's a like disparity between boys and girls. If you allow the affirmative world to happen, Chinese people are going to continuously want more boys, which is going to basically discriminate against gender in China and India. This is just going to make problems worse. On top of being judged for your skin, you're going to be judged on your gender as well. That's bad. Don't allow them to do this. They referenced the 14th Amendment in their last speech. However, they continue. They uh, also brought of the fact that the government can only do like only restrict it if it's in a legitimate government interest. Judge, discrimination is a legitimate government interest. Bam, we win that argument. Going on to the negative case, they talk about they don't really address anything on the negative case as well, but they talk about how um they talk about they talk about how like you should how you should like look towards solving Down syndrome. However, judge, Down syndrome and autism are like are like diseases that are not life threatening. And like when looking at this, they talk about how we should cure this, but this just causes otherization. It shows like, wow, they're not normal, so they're bad. But this is not the case, Judge. In fact, uh, um, a senior in high school, a basketball player with autism, has become the first child with autism to get a full Division One scholarship to play basketball, Judge. These people can live ordinary lives just like we can. We can't say that they're they're the least well off just because they're not the same. They're different. That doesn't make them bad, Judge. So they can't win that argument off of that. They're just discriminating, Judge. They're just putting people in a box and marginalizing groups based on the diseases that they have. So when looking at the observations that we put on place today, we have to understand that it has to be in the child's best interest. This is not going to be in the children's best interest because they're going to be lab rat children throughout their lives. They're going to have to be tested because this is experimental, like the affirmative said. Second, it has to not increase discrimination, but this is not the case. They're going to continuously discriminate because they want to solve things that are quote unquote bad, like Alzheimer's and like, uh, like 
uh, Alzheimer's and I mean, like autism and Down syndrome. Although people can live healthy lives with this, even though they're different. Different is not bad, Judge. So when looking at this, my team and I proudly negate. Thank you.
Yes, they also pointed out that people are judged, and that that means that uh, they like they're trying to cut down on people being judged. That has, like people are judged every day. That has nothing to do with, with anything. That has nothing to do with the argument at all. Never said that. They also. People, uh, people can't afford. People can't afford certain treatments. Okay, they also said that people uh, can't afford the certain treatments for the experiment, but people are also going in debt every day for hospital bills for the diseases that we are trying to prevent overall, like cancer, autism, uh, just Alzheimer's, all types of diseases. So preventing that going forward from the birth stage and not even having that being passed down can eliminate a lot more problems that they're, that they're trying to bring up. Topic. It says parents should have the right to genetically enhance their children using nanotechnology. Uh, the word should is a question of ethics. So when you said this isn't an ethical or unethical conversation, it actually is ethics. Um, we've talked several times about the health benefits to um, altering and editing DNA. Uh, but the problem is, is that there's no consensus or uh, line of what should be edited and what is not. You mentioned Down syndrome, you've mentioned autism and things like that, and like we've stated, those people live with that stuff every single day. Where do you draw the line? Is dwarfism a disease? Is deafness a disease? Uh, most of these people would say that they're not suffering with these things, that they're just living with it. They only suffer from the way society treats them. So large groups of people um, could that are just different and unique can be seen as people that need to be fixed or that they're flawed. Where do you draw that distinction? Is it you say that Down syndrome people don't, that they need to be living better lives without Down syndrome, but you could also say that about a million other different diseases that people live with every single day. Um, you mentioned trying this out as an experiment, but wouldn't that decrease the quality of life as these people have to live in hospitals and have routine checkups and tests done on them all the time? So how is that any type of quality of life? You also mentioned that the, the parents have the right to choose their hair color, eye color, height, whatever. Well, we're, that's what we're arguing, that when you're able to choose those type of things, that's discrimination. And we already have far too many forms of discrimination as it is now. Now we, have to, now we get to discriminate on whether someone has blue eyes, green eyes, brown hair, blonde hair. Uh, this only increases judgment. You say that judgment happens every single day. Yes, but shouldn't we be working on a world that where there is less judgment, not just based on your skin color, your eye color, your hair color. Uh, the cost, yes, only people that are affluent are going to be able to afford these treatments leading to socioeconomic discrimination. So people that are from low income families and cannot edit their DNA to their will because they can't afford it, that causes the main point of discrimination that we've been talking about this whole time. Um, also, who gets to decide what is unhealthy and what's not healthy. So is that the parent? Is that the doctor? Is that uh, the child obviously doesn't get any say so in that? Um, why, why go through with it if you can't find a line between the gene therapy and germline editing? So now we have the grand crossfire, so everyone is allowed to talk. So, um, so any of them are going to be permanent? Okay, so first of all, um, we don't, I, I only said let's take a closer look at Down syndrome because that was the best example that I could give. To, that was easily explainable. Um, I, like I said, there's this can face Alzheimer's, Huntington's disease, um, cancer. Cancer does cause you to die, people. Um, so. Um, that was so yeah, 
yeah. Sense. So yeah, and we like we we agree like there may be some benefits, and if you refer back to that observation that we brought up, it has to be in the child's best interest. So yeah, if you can solve for cancer, that's in the child's best interest. But there's a difference between solving for cancer because it's deadly and solving for like Down syndrome or autism because you just don't want someone to have it. Your like, parents want their kids to have the best yes, life possible. Yes, you want like, at the end of the day, like possible. But like at the end of the day, like. If what have you Down syndrome, you aren't you are you're limited to, to different things. You have to have See, a like that's, every that's single the time. Marginal, like his exact phrase is the Why would you want somebody why would you want somebody about? assisting you every single day of why would you want to do that every day? Like, why would you have why don't you why don't like, you want to live on no, their own? No, no, no. What you're failing to realize is that people people live with this and live on their own all the time. Like I literally referenced a division one athlete who has autism. Yes, like, autism. You can living. live with autism, but other diseases you can't. And that's all what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's good, but you're not making the distinction between that and like making a perfect baby. There's no distinction. We're, we're not saying it's a perfect baby, but eliminating Down syndrome altogether we're not can't to help that. Perfect baby. We're trying to make a healthy you can live with autism. So, you can live with Alzheimer's. You can live with those question. diseases, but other diseases you can't live with. You need assistance. I have a quick question. You said you're not trying to make a perfect baby. Doesn't your definition literally say designer babies? It's not a perfect baby. baby. This is what these it's not, not, there's no such thing as a perfect human being. We want the perfect right, baby. Right, when you so say perfect baby, you say so how you want this. Ask, what is a designer your, 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 your baby? Your definition of perfect is how you want it as a person. What is, what is a designer baby? It's how you design it, how you want it. When you so go to build a bear, how, when you go to build a bear and you and you build a bear, that's your perfect baby. So if it, okay, that's the baby so yeah, you like. If it's how you so design it, to, to your to your to your standards as a human being, not to the world, but to your standards as a person, so, so, that's so, a perfect baby. Okay. Okay. As, as, as your standards to a person, it is a perfect baby. Question. Yes. If something doesn't fit your standards, that means it's bad. No. Yes. <laughs> the obvious, the obvious. No. 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 We're not saying that. As well as the consent of the child comes, it's what the parent wants at this. Did and I say the 14th Amendment? Right. Right. Parents have the right to pick, right? Right. The parents have the right to pick, and then that child's going to grow up knowing that their parent decided this and that for them, Hello, and they don't the have parent, their identity decided. The parents' point. concern is not how uh, if the, their child has blue eyes or green eyes. They want a baby that looks like them. However, they want it to be healthier. Our main, our main thing that we're saying is health. Right, y'all's main thing that y'all are saying is health, but that's not what everyone else is gonna get from this. Chrissy Teigen already has a baby that she decided she wanted as a female before it was born, so they've already done so that. So what's the problem with that? What's the problem with her wanting a girl? Why can't she have no a girl? There's no problem with that. So what are you saying? Where y'all are, is that you're trying to make a designer baby. So she made that child a female, First of all, and then now the child's gonna- Designer baby's just a name, just a phrase. And then the child's gonna grow up, what if that child decides that it's part of the LGBTQ community? So regardless of whatever baby is born, they decide on their own whether they're Okay, 
So in conclusion, we can negate the resolve that parents should have the right to genetically enhance their children using nanotechnology. The concerns and experimentation on this is more of a risk than benefits that will be accomplished. We'd be putting not children, but embryos who have zero consent at risk for technology that's still evolving and is in the early stages of its development. This is strongly against autonomy. Like we brought up again and again, I wonder how the Down syndrome or autistic community would feel about y'all's strong stance with them being incapable and needing that those chromosomes to be taken out. Taking any trait of people who already have these undesirable traits that people would be designing against is already going to create more of a discrimination barrier between those who are already existing and these undesirable traits that we're trying to get rid of. You design something to fit an image that is best for the child's future, but it's bad for social equality. There's no distinction between a healthy baby and a better baby. So even if the, we have these regulations that you're talking about, people are going to go through through those and then create children that might not have the same choices that they had for their child. Like that is all. I didn't know anything about this topic yeah. before we chose it. I just like <laughs> research, research, research. <laughs>